Uh, we're on Whale Beach Road right up at the top of the ridge between the ocean and pit water and where we've got the, the base of the Hawkesbury sandstone is outcropping in these big blocks of rock. Uh, but they're a bit interesting because they've got some incredible contortions in the bedding. If we look carefully at the main block there, we can actually see three layers. At the base there is a, an angled layer which is the original dip slope of sand dunes in the Triassic riverbed that deposited this material. Above that there's the really twisted contorted layers which almost totally mixed up and turned over. And then at the top we have what I'd call a cap rock where the layers go back almost to horizontal again. It's all the one sandstone, it's all the same composition, but what's happened is that the three different beds or the three different units, uh, the middle one has slumped at some stage when it was just saturated sediment and moved on downstream down the valley of the original river. So the originally horizontal or slightly dipping bedding planes have been twisted and contorted into these most incredible patterns in the middle bed. And then the top one is consolidated again and just as normal Hawkesbury sandstone. This stuff is uh, called slump folding, or wet slump folding, wet sediment folding. It's fairly common in the Hawkesbury sandstone, particularly near the base. If we went over into West Head and climbed down from the West Head Peninsula, West Head Road, halfway down the hill slopes towards the pit water, we'd find a number of examples of these things near the base of the Hawkesbury again. Underneath my feet, we will be in the uh, Upper Narrabeen series sandstones and shales. We can't actually see them because they make rather thicker soils than the Hawkesbury does and so they get covered in vegetation. Uh, but they're quite different materials so we're right on a, a time contact between Narrabeen series and Hawkesbury series at this point. Uh, just taking this, this block here where it's been cut through for the access point, you can see the difference very clearly between these dipping beds here, each of these layers is a single bed of sand which was the, part, the slip slope of a dune in the riverbed then the contorted stuff all the way above it and at this point we can't actually see the cap rock. Looking across to the other side you can see the same features right over near the red flowered red leaf plant there the dip slope material is intact then the incredibly twisted contorted stuff in the middle and then the sub horizontal cap rock up at the top. Three different units of sandstone one tiny slice of time what are we talking 240 million years ago thereabouts. Really? Mm. <gasps> Probably a Sunday. It was a f the only house, and they used to come up the ridge to get here. Right. You know, they didn't use the road. So, were they commercial fishermen, or were they just a sort no, of weekend? No, look, type, I, I, just weekend. Yeah. I think. Yeah. I mean, this. I can't imagine this moving. No, but that, isn't this wonderful the way the tree oh, comes down? Yeah. Yeah, grab it. Yeah. Wrap the wrap the roots all around it. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Oh, there's some magnificent contortions on that face when you see it. Isn't it beautiful? Yeah. <coughs> yeah. No, I, I absolutely adore it. I feel as if they're like my, uh, like my guardians. You know? <laughs> that could be. Yeah, 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 especially the two yeah. the ones down the front, there, you know, sort of, sort of yeah, yeah, one. but um, I, uh, I just bay. adore them. <coughs> They're much more important than the house. It's the sort of spot that you think there's got to have been an Aboriginal story about this location. I think you're absolutely right, Peter. Um, some of my First Nation friends that have been here, um, that's the first thing they say, that this is a special rock and pe people sat there. It's amazing when people come here, especially children, the first thing they do is climb up here and sit on that rock. Um, so it's, it's like it's sacred really. And of course it's full of animals that use it and plant life. They're not in flower, but the tongue orchids um, grow. I don't know whether there's any. Here, I think there's, they're so camouflaged. Um, the birds love landing on these rocks too um, because they're full of little water holes and uh, they love drinking and washing themselves and the water dragons love just lying in them. This is all a new body of work 
where um, it actually started during COVID. Um, the art shops were all closed and I had no canvases and I thought very little paper, but I scrounged around and found a whole lot of brown paper and I thought, oh, I'll do something with that. And this one here um, is brown paper. And so that's one of the earlier ones. And uh, so I was interested in the idea of raising it up in relief. So I call them uh, paper relief constructions. I've never seen them done before and, you know, it was totally experimental. So I would sort of crunch them up like that. I'd tear the paper into small pieces about that size and then crunch them and then unfold them and then reshape them, refold them into sculptural shapes and then glue them down to a flat piece of paper. So every paper had a different quality and I found that really fascinating. Um, sometimes I would draw first, like this one here is all pen drawing on white paper and then I did the crunching and folding and unfolding afterwards and of course the brown paper moved on to any sort of paper and these black ones are actually papers that were wrapped around flowers so they came from a florist and the papers from the florist have a special quality this is um, a rock pool and um, it's a bit of plastic that was picked up by somebody else on the beach and she gave it to me for me to throw in the rubbish bin but I kept it. So um, little bits of colour appearing here and there um, and of course pen drawing um, and um, lots of little hidden crevices which create the shadows and the light and the mystery. Uh, this is an early work um, in brown paper and so it's not high relief um, but it's it's got a real strength and this is what was interesting about glue how using glue this whole picture was covered in glue to give it strength. Um, I did add other papers, I can see some tissue here. Um, sometimes I kind of make the tissue into little balls like right there. Um, so many different things I did here, it's hard to remember. There's a spider in there. Um, all these tissues that are here were meant to represent the wonderful sort of canopy-like spider webs that are all in the crevices um, of the rock. So this is a very textured work and obviously a lot of pencil work, um, paint, um, glue. Um, I got fascinated with glue and how it could change the nature of the work. And this, this took quite a long time because there's a lot of um, fine pen drawing in it and probably a bit more colour than a lot of the other work. These are a little bit different in that, you know, the paper is an old um, novel, a paperback, where the paper had started to go all brown, but I thought that made it more interesting. And of course it's covered in text and uh, I used a whole page for every crunch and I went through I got two paintings and that took the whole book so <laughs> right down to the last page have, have been turned into um, relief constructions in paper but I had enormous fun with this because I got interested in the actual 
novels themselves and what they were about. You're part of a series called Flashman. I've never heard of it before. And it was talking about um, England in the 1850s when they were preparing for war and the young men um, were growing hair on their face, um, moustaches and beards and they were wearing flashy clothes and their shirts had skulls on it, um, crossbones and all sorts of things. So I wanted to introduce the gaudy colour. I was influenced by the books themselves. Um, but um, I imagine they were very quick, easy reading for men. <laughs> this one I had enormous fun with because I decided I had quite a bit of tissue in white and I thought, hmm, we'll see what happens here. Uh, I've used tissue a little bit before, but certainly not in this context. Um, so I was playing with tissue and other white paper. White was the criteria. And, um, and I stopped at lunchtime and went down to see if there's any letters actually. And would you believe there was a paper serviette in the letterbox with a little note. The note is actually in, t in the painting. There's some of the note. 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 And the note said, I came to your place a long time ago, at least 10 years ago, and saw your magnificent rocks. Would I be allowed to bring a friend one day to see the rocks? I couldn't believe it. Here's me sort of doing all this work on rocks. And so the note got torn up and put into the picture within about 10 minutes of reading it. <laughs> and um, so it, uh, it was a lovely experience actually. And um, one day that lady's probably going to come up the hill with her friend to look at the rocks. But as you can see, this is um, a fairly kind of mysterious work, I suppose. Um, and it's got a lot of hidden qualities. You know, this work sort of just came very um, sp spontaneously and uh, I was sitting doing the work and looked down on the floor and there were two little bits of purple thread. So I picked them up and they went straight in the work. A um, little bit like the, um, the note from the lady on the paper serviette. So there's a little bit of, um, apart from the thread, there's a bit of pen work, um, pencil work, and a variety of different white papers, but mostly tissue and a bit of napkin. Yes, well, this was a, a, a fun work to do. And um, as I was talking earlier about all the flotsam and jetsam that I seem to collect and have, including string. I've always enjoyed string. Um, and I thought string would be a lovely way to um, depict the patterns in the rock um, and the lovely movement that string can give. So lots of broken shells as well, um, bits of different um, size string, thick, thin, um, some of it um, very hairy, others not so. Um, bits of wood, tiny little um, twigs, um, but I, mostly just a great deal of fun. <laughs>